Hey guys, welcome back to another How to Use with Sonic Academy. In this video, we are going to take a look at D16 Tektron, which is a multi-tap sequence delay. Um, in the first video, we are going to have a look at the user interface and how all the controls work. And the second video, we're going to have a listen to some sound examples in a track mix. Um, so first things first, I just want to have a little talk about what the difference is between this and a, a normal delay. So if we just, in fact, let's just grab Ableton's ping pong. So in a normal delay, you're setting the delay time by time increments, which you can do here, or you can unsync it and use millisecond control. Let me just get rid of that. But with Tektron, uh, you've actually got a kind of step sequence window where using these bars, you can define where your delay taps are hitting. So rather than letting the plugin or the delay unit just work on the time signature that you set, you can set these up um, custom individual notes. And let me just initialize that. We'll come back to that window in a second. I just want to go through some of the other controls first. So the first control you come to is mute tap one direct signal. Now, if you're using Tektron as an insert, what this will do is it will mute the first tap or the first delay hit that you hear, because otherwise that would hit at the same time as the dry signal at the, the same transient. And what would happen is you're kind of layering up two of the same sound and you would start getting to the realms of clipping and horrible distortion. So that allows you to switch that first hit off. Um, less relevant if you have it on a send, um, but you can experiment with that. Then coming across to these buttons here, you've got an options button. This allows you to set processing quality presets, MIDI and user interface. Processing quality can be set real time and offline. Real time means the quality that you're using as you're using the plugin in a mix. Um, I'd probably leave that on Ultra. I don't know. It's not a very high CPU use plugin. And then offline is setting the quality when you're rendering or bouncing the track out. So whilst you're not mixing and you're just rendering your stereo file out, I would leave that on Ultra all the time. Presets gives you a warning. If you tick this box, it'll give you a warning. Um, telling you that you've made changes to the preset you're using before you pick another one. Um, I think we know that already. I'm not sure if I'd use that. MIDI allows you to load in MIDI CC maps. And what this does, if you save um, settings so that you use, you're using your MIDI controller to control all the parameters on the plugin, you can actually save that map. And then user interface, you can choose big or small. Um, just as a side note, a lot of these settings are mirrored down at the bottom here. So you can choose your real time and offline processing, your MIDI CC load and save and the UI. The small UI is the old D16 UI. Um, and unless you're using a really low resolution, I'd probably give that one a miss. I mean, I'm, I'm only using a 1080 screen here and that's still quite small for me. And I like my UI to be big. Moving over to this window here. If you click on this window, this is going to give you your preset browser and it will also show your preset name. So you can click between the presets here. Um, there's, the, there's a browse button over on the right here as well. These two things kind of have the same function. And when you're choosing presets, you can choose between factory and user. I haven't got any user preset saved yet. And there are filters by type. So you've got echo, reverb, spatialized, wave shaper and de decay length as well. Um, what does that do? That just I hadn't hadn't used that one before. Um, sorry, rambling. So you, you've got preset tags and uh, a basic preset selection tool here. Let's just flick that off. You've also got next and previous preset buttons, so you can scroll between them. But I suppose most of the time I'd probably use the browser. Now you might notice that at the top of each button there's another function which is underlined. This is accessed by using Control Click or probably Command Click on a Mac. In fact, it is command click on a Mac. So instead of being options, if I hold down control and click that, it gives me some information about the plugin and that's me. And then we've got initialize. So control click here. This initializes the, pre the, the plugin back to its default state. And then we've got reload and save. If you click save, you can actually use the tagging system to save with your preset. So if I call this one awesome presets, and then you can say this is an echo of medium length and save it. I won't do that now because there's nothing on there. So let's just cancel this. We're going to come back to the main window in a bit because that's where all the meat and potatoes is. So we'll come back to that last. You have a master filter. Uh, you've got a high pass, a band pass and a low pass. 
This is post anything you do here. So you can use your cutoff and resonance controls on the master filter. And then we've got a dry wet knob. The dry wet knob, interestingly, can be locked. So if you're using it on a send channel, you'd want this set to wet all the time. So what this allows you to do is set the plug into 100% wet. And as you scroll through the presets, it will remain 100% wet all the time. If you unlock it, as you scroll through presets, not all of them will be set to 100% wet. Let's just initialize this again. And then we've got an output volume. So you can control the output volume uh, in case any of these get pretty loud. You can, you can trim that off. Uh, at the end of the plugin. And then finally down to the time section, your time grid is linked to the steps you've got here. So at the moment, this is set to uh, 1 16th notes, full, full and dotted and triplet notes are supported. Full is just normal. Uh, it doesn't actually mean anything other than normal. So 16th notes. And what that's describing is the resolution of each of these steps. So each one of these steps is now a 16th note. And what that means is, is if you've got 16 notes, 16 steps here, and this is set to 1 16th, this is effectively, this window effectively represents one bar in your door. So you can scale the resolution of this section here up to 64th notes or down to eighth notes. Uh, if you set it to eighth notes, then obviously you're halving the resolution and this then becomes two bars. This represents 16 notes is a full bar. This is a quarter and an eighth of a bar. So I think for most purposes, for most kind of standard style delay lines, I would probably leave this on 16th, but you don't have to. You don't have to do that. Let's just initialize this again. You can have this synced or unsynced, like most delay plugins. If you have it unsynced, your time grid is then based on milliseconds. So each one of these will be 100 milliseconds. And you can also set the tap tempo. Hear my mouse clicking there. You can use this as a tap tempo. If you want to play along to another track, you can set your delay up that way. But again, for me, I'd mostly have it set up to sync. And then finally, we have a shuffle dial. So this is like your Ableton groove templates. Uh, you can't edit it, but it's just the amount of shuffle that you have applied to your delay taps and then a feedback. So this is feeding back the delay line on itself. These are all fairly standard. So they're the, the controls outside of the main window. Now we're going to have a look at the main window, which is all the uh, exciting stuff. So what I've done here is I've set up in Ableton, I've set up kick two, and I'm just using a single kick at the start of each bar. So let's just have a quick listen to that. So that's playing over and over again. The reason why I've done that is because this Ableton MIDI piano grid window here is now at exactly the same resolution as this Tektron window here. So it's going to make it easier for us to see and hear what's going on. So at the moment, we've only got one delay tap set up, which is defined by this volume section here. You've actually got lots of different sections, which we'll come back to. But the main taps are set up in the volume window. And the first one's muted, because if I have that unmuted, uh, let me just lower this down what you'll hear is the tap will play at the same time as the kick and it will get very loud. So it starts clipping, which is why we have that one muted. So what we can do is we can draw in delay taps wherever we want them. So let's have a listen to this. Uh, the blue lines, by the way, that's the volume of the tap. So if I just do something like that, we don't want all of them. What you'll see is when I when I click play now, you'll see little kind of uh, VU meter bars come up as each tap's playing. Okay, so you can see how that works. Let's just do something a little bit more simple. So you can start getting very creative about where your delay hits are sounding rather than just relying on a normal delay plugin doing the same thing based on the time signature that you choose. You can actually define where you put your delay taps in. So let's take this back to normal. Now, what we need to do is we need to come down and have a look at these other controls and see what they do. So I am going to set up one single hit here. So let's have a listen to this. And then we'll come down to the delay parameter. And what this is, it's kind of like having a modifier 
are a, a delay time modifier for each tap. So at the moment, we've only got one tap sounding, which is this one here. We need to apply some feedback to actually hear what the delay modifier is doing. And I'm gonna bring this one all the way down to times one. And then we need to put the feedback up for this tap as well. So let's have a listen to this tap. Have a listen to the tap that's happening here and then have a listen to what happens as, as I increase or decrease this setting. Okay, so what you've effectively got here is you've effectively got a delay setting per tap as well. So you've got your overall, overall delay taps happening on these steps that you put in manually. And then this delay parameter allows you to modify the feedback of the delay on each tap. Sounds a little bit complicated. You just have to kind of play with it and then, then hear what it's doing. Uh, let me just put this feedback up so we can hear it a bit, a bit better. Uh, let's go back to here. So let's listen to this again. So at the moment, because it's set to times one, it's doing the same thing as the time group we've set here. Times two. And then times three, you're gonna hear kind of a triplet note. Okay, let's put this back to where it was. So that's the delay setting. It's a little bit hard to get your head around, but it's something you kind of need to play with and hear in practice. Just think of it as like a modifier to, to set the, the delay time on a tap. So you, you, you can use it to set an independent delay time for each tap. So for example, actually, let me give you another example. If I put another tap in and I set the delay time to one for this one and then two for this one, I need to set the feedback up for this one and then we'll come back. You'll hear the feedback of the delay on this tap will be different than on this one. I know it sounds confusing, I'm even confusing myself, but you will hit, be able to hear the difference and that's the most important thing. So you can hear the delay on this tap feeding back at a slightly different rate to this one. You got me? I think I've made sense there, so we'll move on to the next section. Right, okay, so Coming back to volume, we're gonna have a tap set here, tap set here, feedback at maximum. So let's have a listen to this. It's gonna sound fairly standard again. Now, what we can also do, we can set our panning per tap. So let's put a couple more in. Let's set the feedback all the way up. In fact, no, let's do it about halfway because otherwise it's gonna to start to sound messy. So what we can do is where these taps are set on here, one, two, three, four, where it says audible, we can actually use the panning function to pan each tap out left and right. And combined with that, you also have a spread function, which is, uh, think of it like a, it adjusts the phase of the left and right channel. So you can think of it almost like a Hass effect. So you just want a little bit of this. You don't want too much. Let's put too much on the last one. You can hear it. You, you kind of get like a flaming. So let's listen to this. This is going to vastly increase the stereo field. That last one is way out though, because you're, you're adjusting the face so much that the timing starts to sound off. So you would only want to use this a little bit. You go right. I'm going to set these back to standard. In fact, let me just initialize it, it'll be faster. Set some new taps in, and then what I want to do is come down to the filter section. And what this allows you to do is if you have the filter section, the fil let me start again. The filter can be set per tap as well. So you've got an independent filter per tap, and as default, this round circle means that each tap is going to be going through the master filter. And what you can do here is have a listen to, let me put this on a low pass. So 
So you can hear the taps being affected by the master filter, but you don't have to have them all going through the master filter. What you can also do is you can choose a bandpass filter for this tap. You can have a high pass filter for this tap, another bandpass here and a low pass here. And then you've got a cutoff and resonance setting per tap as well. So for the first one, we've got a bandpass filter. So let's have a listen to this tap and then we can adjust the cutoff for that single tap. And the resonance. And then the second tap here, what have we got? We've got a high pass. So let's set that one. And the resonance. And so on and so forth. We've got another band pass on this last one. Set the resonance. And then the last one I believe was a low pass. So let's set that one as well. Yeah, low pass. So, I mean, you can probably hear there, you, this is starting to get very flexible. Because you can set a filter for each individual tap, you can get very creative with this. At the moment, I'm, I'm just running a kick through because the kick's got a very strong transient and it's very easy to hear what's going on. Um, but you could, you could use anything, you could put anything through this and, and combine with the panning. Let's go back to the panning again. Oh, don't want that one. And then the spread, let's give this a little bit of spread for each note. And then we can set the feedback up. And then we can come back to the delay modifier and start messing around with that as well. So you can hear this, the texture and the sound starting to build up. It can start to get very interesting. So those, those are the main controls of the plugin. We kind of know what everything does now. Apologize if the delay section here was a little bit confusing, but I actually had to email the developer myself because I wasn't quite sure how it worked. It's not as intuitive as I think it could be, but I think we're kind of where we need to be now. So... In the next video, we're going to have a listen to some of this in action. We're going to kind of create probably probably something like a little techno loop to see what we can do with this. So I hope you found this video useful and I will see you in the next one. Cheers. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please We'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.